Hello, welcome back to my continued coverage of the Steam Deck and I've done quite a few videos of the Steam Deck. Yesterday I did a video on the GPU performance of the Steam Deck and I've done a couple of live streams as well about the announcement and the reaction. So go back and watch those videos. I know they're a little bit long but I've got timestamps on those videos so you can go back and check out the topics there and watch the videos that way. Now in this video I want to talk a little bit about the eMMC storage in the base version of the Steam Deck because I ran across this video from Review Tech USA and the title of this video is Do Not Buy the Base Version of the Steam Deck and you know that opinion in and of itself isn't so bad because you may want to recommend the higher spec version to your subscribers or people watching the video because it's just going to perform better. The SSD is going to perform better than the eMMC. But he made some comments about the eMMC storage, about how that's not going to run games well. And I think that comment there is wrong. And then I'm going to prove it to you in this video. And I'm going to show you a clip from Mark Cerny's PS5 hardware reveal. Because I think that's going to prove to you that uh, the eMMC storage is fine. Um, so in this Mark Cerny video, he talked about how the PS4 was developed for games running off a hard drive. And PS5... Um, the hope is that games will be developed running off the SSD. So I think for games, anything that is PS4 and below is going to run just fine on the eMMC storage. Okay, so if you like this video, make sure to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. And we also have a Discord server, so come along and join us there. And I'll leave a link in the description below. So first of all, let me be clear. I'm not trying to call out Rich from Review Tech USA. I quite like his channel, I like his videos, I think he makes pretty good videos in general. So uh, again, I'm not trying to call him out, but if there's something technical, I do want to point that out. So that's the difference here. Okay, so I'm going to play you two clips from his video, edited together, and then we'll come back and discuss. And then I'm also going to play you Mark Cerny's PS5 hardware reveal, where he talked about how games were developed for the PS4, specifically for the hard drive which is very much like eMMC storage or a micro SD card. And then he's going to talk about how the PS5 is developed for games running off an SSD and how uh, there are differences between uh, the two ways of developing the games. Problem I have with all three of the models is inadequate storage. And what's even worse about the base model, which is only $50 more than the upcoming Nintendo Switch OLED, is that it has 64 gigabytes of eMMC memory. That's real slow memory. Like, at best, maybe if it's going through PCIe, you could get like 500 megabytes a second through it. The base Steam Deck model, that 64 gigabytes is not an NVMe SSD. It's not even a SATA SSD. It's eMMC memory, which is slow as a dog. And secondly, if you think that you're going to be running games that need to stream assets all the time, like an open world game off of a micro SD card, <laughs> I got some bad news for you. It's not going to happen. So in this clip, he says that 64 gigabytes of internal storage isn't really enough on the base version of the Steam Deck. And I got to agree with him there because I think that the Steam games generally are a little bit bigger in size than, say, Switch games, for example. So if you compare the 64 gigabyte OLED Switch versus the 64 gigabyte Steam Deck, I think the Switch games are going to be smaller and then the Steam games, uh, they're going to be bigger. So you're going to feel like you're not, you don't have as much space. So I think that's a fair comment, uh, although I will say that you can add in your own micro SD cards. So I think that with the 256 gigabyte model and the 512 gigabyte model of the Steam Decks, you're probably going to add in a micro SD card anyways to all three models. So you're going to be playing games off of those three. And uh, I think you're going to be able to play games just fine anyway, which I will prove in a second. Now, he says that... Uh, the eMMC storage is also going to run uh, a load game slower. And that is also true. It's also going to load games slower. So if you have excessively long load times, that's going to be exacerbated by a hard drive or an eMMC storage model, um, whereas it's going to feel much quicker on an SSD. So I recently played Microsoft Flight Simulator, and technically you could play this on a hard drive, which I did. I played this on a hard drive, 
and it took about five minutes to get uh, to the menu and then it took another five minutes to load up the plane and it took five minutes to get into the game which took 15 minutes overall to actually get to playing the game so with an ssd it's much faster you can get into the game within like a couple of minutes at the most so i think um, with an SSD, there are definitely games where that's going to help, uh, where you wouldn't want to play those games on a hard drive anyway, because the load times are just going to be far too long. Now, he also says that the um, storage, the EMC storage, won't be able to run games well because it's not going to load in the assets fast enough. And so here, I'm going to turn it over to the Mark Cerny PS5 hardware reveal where he talks about the PS4 hard drive and also the PS5 SSD. So let's run those clips first and then we'll come back and discuss. And all of that leads to the dream. What if we could have not just an SSD, but a blindingly fast SSD? If we could load five gigabytes a second from it, what would change? On PlayStation 4, game data on the hard drive feels very distant and difficult to use. By the time you realize you need a piece of data, it's much too late to go out and load it. So system memory has to contain all of the data that could be used in the next 30 seconds or so of gameplay. On PlayStation 5, though, the SSD is very close to being like more RAM. Typically, it's fast enough that when you realize you need a piece of data, you can just load it from the SSD and use it. Part of the reason for that 5 gigabyte a second target was to eliminate loads, but also part of the reason for that target was streaming. As in, what if the SSD is so fast that as the player is turning around, it's possible to load textures for everything behind the player in that split. So in those couple of clips, Mark Sony talked about the differences between the PS4 hard drive and the PS5 SSD and how they differ in terms of developing games for them. So with the PS4 hard drive, you had about 50 megabytes per second to 100 megabytes per second, which is roughly in line with SD cards. And with eMMC storage, they could potentially be up to 500 megabytes per second. So technically, I think uh, with the EMC storage and the micro SD cards, they would be more than enough of a match for that PS4 hard drive. And that's how games used to be developed for them in the past, because you would, uh, because the hard drive was much too slow uh, and the RAM was uh, much faster, you would actually load as much as you possibly could into the RAM itself. And then you'd have, say, for example, Mark Sony said that there were 30 seconds worth of play data or assets in the RAM. And then uh, the game would systematically load different types of assets, even for streaming games. And they would make sure that uh, you wouldn't actually have a situation where you're actually streaming stuff off of the hard drive. You're actually streaming stuff from the system RAM or the VRAM. So for games that are um, developed for PS4 or pretty much games that have developed up to now, most games have been developed for the hard drive as a baseline. So most games are going to run just fine on that micro SD or eMMC storage. Now for games developed in the future, Mark Cerny also said that they want to be able to be in a situation where they can develop games for SSD where you can just load things as quick as uh, the SSD can go. So that would mean that uh, in that 16 gigabytes of PS5 memory, for example, they'd be able to load up everything that you would actually see on the screen. And then if you turn around, then you would actually be loading stuff off of the SSD into the system RAM, and it would be quick enough where you'd actually turn the character around and you would get all of those assets in. So that's going to be a lot more um, graphical fidelity, and you're going to have a lot more detail in your games. And so that's the goal of the PS5 SSD and other SSD games as well, which I don't think we've really seen yet. We might have seen that in Ratchet and Clank on the PS5, which is PS5 only. But aside from that, all of the games that we've had up until this point, mostly designed for hard drives. And I think just one final point is that if you're worried going into the future about whether you should get the SSD for running games, well, I think your main concern really is the GPU of that Steam Deck anyway, because I think you don't actually have enough GPU processing power to play games that are probably triple um, A and need an SSD to play it. So I think you're going to have that GPU bottleneck first uh, rather than that SSD.
So what I mean by that is your PS5 has 10 teraflops of processing power, your Steam Deck has 1.6 teraflops of processing power, and that's fine for playing games like 720p at low settings. And I showed you in that GPU performance video that even for a game like Control, uh, which came out a couple of years ago, you're really just playing that at 720p low settings. So I think you're going to have a bottleneck with your GPU first and foremost. And so this Steam Deck is really made for games that were from PS4 era and before. You may be able to play some PS5 games that are less demanding, but in terms of AAA games that need an SSD card, uh, you're probably going to have a problem with the GPU first. Okay, so that's going to be it for this one. If you like this video, make sure to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. And I'll see you in the next one.